Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. So today we bring you a different type of video. It's a sit-down video. And today we are talking about are zoos important for conservation? Yes? No? Let's find out. Well, the first thing is to realize that not all zoos are the same. We cannot put all zoos in the same plate. You have amazing zoos that are doing a fantastic job for conservation, for education, for wildlife. Then you have zoos that are just using animals to make money. And with this video we hope to give you a few tools and on how to find out which zoo is which. And of course you have to go for the ones <laughs> they are doing for the conservation. Yes. So there's four objectives that, at least four objectives that the zoos should have. First of all, the bigger one is education, right? So zoos should have as their top priority to educate people about the animals that they have. Uh, that means people that visit and they should educate about research projects that they are doing. Another thing, obviously, is the research. They should be involved in doing research. That means animal behavior, ecology, all those types of things. Another thing is conservation. Do they help with conservation inside the zoo and outside, like conservation programs for example, happening in Africa or South America. And another thing is breeding programs. Not all zoos do breeding programs and the breeding program, not all of it is good. It's not only just breeding animals. No, there has to be a meaning. And when we talk about breeding programs, is breeding of endangered species, species that are actually disappearing in the wild. And the idea is, if we have enough species in the zoos of that species that is almost disappearing in the wild, we're making sure that the species will prevail, the species will survive. And then we go for the conservation part. We go and try to rehabilitate the place where they were supposed to be. If the animals disappear one side, we're going to bring the animals back to that site. That's why it is important the education, the research, the conservation, and the breeding programs. You have zoos that they do not do breeding programs. And that doesn't mean they are bad zoos, by the opposite. They might be zoos that their whole purpose is to rescue animals. And when you rescue, uh, when you rescue an animal, your objective is not to breed that animal because you're just multiplying the problem that you have. So the idea is you sterilize the animal and you give it the best life it can get in captivity. in captivity before it dies. So there's a few things that we should look for in a zoo to know if it's a good zoo or a bad zoo. So one of the things is we need to see if they are accredited by an institution. And that means WAZA, which is the World Association of Zoos and Aquariums. For example, AZA and EASA as well, which is the European and the World Associations. So if the zoo is accredited by those organizations, it is a good thing. They have as a top priority the well-being of the animals. Another thing that we should look into is enclosures. When you look at the animals enclosures, you have to have the idea of the size of the animal and how the animal used to behave in the wild, giving to those animals that do require more space, they have more space. But that's, it's not only about having space, but also if the animals can have privacy. Because as you can imagine, not all animals like to be have 24 hours eyes on them. They need to have their own privacy. And a good enclosure can should have enough vegetation. If the animal doesn't want to be seen, it can actually hide. Another thing is the enrichment. Do animals inside the enclosures, do they have enough enrichment for them to work for their food, to stay fit, to stay active, to act as natural as possible? To develop that, their skills. To develop their skills. For example, a cheetah. Cheetah needs to run. Make her run. That's the whole life of a cheetah is to run. So make her run for the food and you'll keep an animal happy 
engaged and in a good welfare and not a, a depressed super fat animal depressed looking at a corner of of the enclosure if you see an animal staring in front of a corner of enclosure or staring at the wall that's not a good sign it's a distressed animal that something is going on so animals in their natural habitat they are challenged every single day right because they need to forage for their food and water so zoos have that part to do that as the animals are in captivity one thing that we should question is where do the animals come from if you're in a zoo you're looking at a bear where did this animal come from so good zoos get their animals from other institutions, other parks. Bad zoos take animals from their natural habitats. Most of the time is babies. Zoos that do that are zoos that you should not support in any manner. Um, they are doing that illegally because it's not legal to take an animal from their natural habitat and put it in a cage. So you should question and the, anim the zoos actually should tell you where this animal came from. That is a big part and it helps with the genetic pool of the animals in the populations, keeping the populations healthy because the individuals are coming from different places and they're not breeding with the same animals and for example breeding within the family. Uh, so that's a good thing because it keeps the genetic pool very healthy and in balance. The last thing, one of the last things that you should look at is do they allow animal interactions? Me and Bia, we have different opinions on the animal interaction. Bia believes that there should be no interaction with the animals. And I do understand, but for me, I believe there should, it is okay to have interaction, but there's a lot of ifs and there's a lot of reasons why why they do that interaction if the interaction is to try to create a bond between the people and the animals so the so the people can start to help by funding by donating money to preserve that species in the wild and that money actually goes to programs to help animals in the wild i have nothing against it but also depends how the interaction is what are we going to do with the animals Am I going to be the one touching the animal? Or for example, they tell me, you're gonna be in this enclosure, you have food in your hand, the animals will come, they will take it, do not touch the animal, don't do anything. That, for me, it is uh, an interaction that is okay, because it's not you invading, how do you say, their personal space, it's actually the animals coming to you. So in that one, I believe it's okay. For example, when you go swim with dolphins, are you going to be towed, are you going to be on a boat and uh, dolphin is gonna drag that boat for me that's not okay I do understand for example the shows are good to show you how fantastic the animal is and how how athletic the animal is and that's the thing I want people to be honest when the interactions are happening what information during the interaction is going to give to you yes. it is just a go touch the animal or come and learn about the animal yeah so this topic it's kind of a problematic Very. topic about are zoos good or bad because it's not just black and white it has a lot of gray area a lot of gray and, and different shapes of gray yes exactly <laughs> so this is that's why we are kind of doing this video is to kind of educate you a little bit more to things to look into to see if it's a good institution or not we're just gonna make that gray air area a little bit more white you know yeah. just helping out a little bit yeah just trying to help you to find this comfortable for you and how to protect you from regretting doing something yes because for example i'll be honest when i was younger i was i swimmed with the dolphins so back in the days i was young like my parents gave me that as a birthday present so i was doing that interaction with the dolphins and i was extremely happy about that because oh my god it's a dolphin it's huge it feels so good like touching it like the skin is just amazing but after a few years in getting the proper education uh, I didn't agree with it but at the time I didn't know because I wasn't informed and that's kind of what we want to portray uh -huh. and we want to do is to educate people for you 
to make your own decision to see if it's right or wrong according to your values we're not saying it's wrong or not or right mm -hmm. we're just showing you and giving you all the cards and then you get to decide according to your values i've also done uh, i've also swam with dolphins uh, more recently but still a, a lot of years ago I, I did an elephant ride by then i was already against elephant ride but i was told it was a rescued there were rescued animals by going i would be helping preserving them and educating about them and i can say i was deeply mistaken that they were not rescued at all at least it makes no sense for those elephants to be rescued once exactly so that's unfortunately one thing as well so this institution portrayed that they had rescued elephants and that doing that you would be helping them yeah so that is why it's also very important for you to do your own research regarding the institution read the comments yes. uh see their social media exactly see the comments message people that did that for example volunteering programs just educate yourself yeah. and look into the information deep deep because sometimes the institution they portray it like they're perfect and mm -hmm. they, they do this and that for conservation that they're helping the animals and then deep down that's not the real story and nowadays we have no excuse to go uninformed there's yeah. so much information that we can protect too much information exactly sometimes. so we can protect ourselves yeah. from falling to these uh, traps so <laughs> to finish, <laughs> what are the values that a zoo should have for us believe it is a trustworthy uh, zoo? Number one, restoring populations of threatened species. Not Again, as I said, not having animals just because they won't have animals. There is a goal for those animals to be there. And that is to restore populations in the wild, to preserve the species. Yes. Another thing is to maintain the numbers of animals and their genetic diversity, as we've mentioned as well. And that is by getting individuals from different institutions so they're not breeding with their daughters or their sisters and all of that. Grandmothers, right? yeah. all of that. So that will create a big health problem for the animals. Mm -hmm. Also, are they helping developing and researching new ways to preserve? For example, we are discovering many new species every day and the zoos are a big part because there's animals that are so elusive that we have only seen it once on a camera track. So having that animal in a zoo actually can help us to learn about the animal, learn of its habits of animal behavior and then we know what threatens do they have and how to protect the animal in the wild. So you should also see if they provide funding for research and conservation projects that are happening in the field. So a lot of zoos are actually proud to be funding and helping out with the research and projects like in Africa, Asia, South America, anywhere. So there's a lot of zoos that are proud of that and they will tell you that. And for last, I mean number one, <laughs> is do they inspire people to protect the animals? Because that's the number one goal. The number one goal is to make people care about the animals that they cannot see in the wild and make them go and pay and want to see them in the wild and make sure that the animals stay in the wild, that the animals' habitats stay animal habitats. That's the number one goal. That's the number one goal of conservation. Keeping wild, wild and making sure we don't lose more species than that we already lost. And if you find a zoo and that's not the number one goal, then I have to say it's that's not the right zoo. And I hope you enjoyed it, our video. Uh, there's so much that we can be here talking. It's a conversation that can last hours, hours and hours. So this is just a small taste of what things you should look for in the zoos. And we would love to hear what you think. What did we forget something? Are there any more points that zoos should be doing and there, and that we forgot to mention? Uh, mm -hmm. And if you have any questions that you would love us to try to answer, we will be more than happy yeah. to, to answer. Yeah, let's just create a discussion because as you could see, just us two, we have 
kind of different opinions regarding different topics so I'm sure a lot of you agree some other don't agree with what we said so we would love to see what you have to say mm -hmm. and we also wrote a blog post about this so we will leave it down below if you guys would like to check it out it's a little bit more in depth of this topic mm -hmm. yeah and if you'd like to know more about wildlife about conservation sustainability you can view, visit us on Instagram, on Facebook, Inspire Wilderness. And if there's any other topic that you guys would like us to talk about, just leave it down in the comments and we would be happy to discuss it. So thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs>